initial interest in engineering was from wanting to apply maths and science to build real things. Obviously engineering is around all of us but I may not have been aware of it as a child so I came across it purely through um, an interest in the subject um, and I stayed in engineering because it allows you to uh, deliver real projects that have a real impact on people's lives. After graduation, I spent four and a half years in industry in building design, um, where I was lucky enough to work on a range of projects from Wimbledon to Grade 1 listed refurb. I got chartered at the end of that process, and then I spent a year alongside the ICE um, president, Paul Jowett, as one of his apprentices, and now I'm a volunteer engineer with a um, search and rescue organisation called uh, SARAID. The humanitarian work really allows you to see an impact of, um, of what you're doing. More importantly, it allows you to see an impact of the skills that you're developing in, in, in your job as an engineer. It, it really seals the, seals the deal in allowing you to apply those skill sets to, to people that need it. When the call to deploy to Nepal came, I was on a training exercise in Cornwall and I potentially had to go to the airport and have my wife meet me with my passport. And that, that realisation really kind of brought home how important it is to, to be on top of your skills and on top of, of, of everything at any, at any one point. In Nepal, we were in the country carrying out urban search and rescue for five days under UN Search and Rescue Coordination as well. So there was a, a number of buildings that we were, um, we were searching. Um, one example was of a five-storey concrete frame building which um, had collapsed sideways um, onto an adjacent playground and, um, and then separated such that all of the floor slabs were actually upside down and resting directly on one another. So you're essentially looking at the building upside down and kind of pancaked out. They wanted us to search the area um, because it was felt that some people may have been in the playground when the building had, uh, had collapsed. I and one of the other engineers and other members of the team were assessing the structure from the outside, um, whilst other members were exploring voids and carrying out primary searches over the, um, over the rubble. Team members that were exploring voids felt that they heard tapping within the, within the structure, um, so they used hand tools to breach um, further into the structure, opening up another void. Um, they explored that void with a snake camera. The dog went in as, uh, as well to, to explore, and the dog didn't indicate any, uh, any live scent uh, at all, and then it was, it, was, it was determined that there was nobody uh, alive still in the structure, at which point we, um, we, uh, we left and moved on to next. One of the research projects that I was involved in um, a few years ago was on seismic retrofitting in rural Nepal um, and that was recognising the fact that you have non-engineered buildings that are very vulnerable to, to collapse. We conducted a training course for rural masons who are building the houses in simple rules of thumb of how to build more safely um, and then those masons then went on to retrofit a real house which was a two-storey adobe building and uh, following the earthquake um, recently I went and had a look at that building and the building was still standing, the retrofit had prevented the, um, the, the collapse. It did feel very good that, um, that we'd, you know, our team had worked on this house and that the house was still standing. And these people are not only alive but they still have uh, a working home when otherwise they may not be able to get another one. So that was very gratifying and it felt very good. Engineers are very good at seeing something that may be overwhelming at first and then breaking it down into what can be done and then doing it. I think that being a good engineer um, means being competent, getting the, fig the, the figures right. Um, getting the, the projects delivered on time and on budget, etc. And that is in itself an excellent output of your skill set. The humanitarian side is an optional extra that really if you want to see um, how your skill set is being applied to people that really need it, then that's what really gives you that gratification and, and kind of allows you to look back and understand why you're learning the skills that you are.